It's an honor to be here at the Prime Health Summit. I am here with Todd Evanson, the COO of the Medical Group Management Association. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time. Um, so we were talking earlier, you, you've actually been in, in Colorado since I think 99. Correct. Um, I thought we'd start there. Um, you've seen the journey of, of the ecosystem evolve sure. here. You've been a part of, sure. of that evolution, in fact. Um, how are how have things changed, and what's it like now to be an innovator here in in Colorado? Well, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, MGMA. I've uh, worked there for about ten years now, and I actually came out of the entrepreneur world in the telecom days. And uh, in '99, I, when I moved to Denver, um, that was really the space I was in. But uh, more recently, MGMA. You know, we've been around for ninety years, as an example. And we've realized to make it to the next 90 years, we had to evolve. We had to change. Mm -hmm. So much like our community, we recognized uh, in the innovation space that you know, if we could find the partnerships, the discussions, the collaborations where we could lean upon one another, um, we really could make, I think, a bigger difference. We were very fragmented, is the way I would describe um, what was going on before. And there wasn't, I think, a, a push that was um, kind of in a singular fashion like has been more recently. Then when this great group got together with Prime Health, uh, the summit itself, bringing groups together a couple years back. It gave us all an opportunity to lean on one another. And uh, through that, we found that there's a lot of similarities where we could, we could pick up on each other's strengths. Uh, same time, we realized that there was a lot of weaknesses in the community as well. But through that, um, there's some great people involved, some great personalities, the Jake Rishavis, the, the Mike Baselli's, the mm -hmm. Jeffrey Nathansons, and others, um, that I think really started to help get us a buzz. And that brought, I think, some of the biggest pieces of the puzzle, some great talent into our community. So we started you know, finding folks from all aspects of uh, the industry, from both tech and health. And we're you know, a community that I think is very strong in our health presence and our capabilities. But from a tech perspective, we hadn't fully kind of explored what was possible. But uh, through that work, now we're up over that 130 tech innovators. Um, what I think is exciting, it's not just about the technology anymore. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of innovation that's going on that is outside of building the next app, um, whether that's from patient workflows to making that next generation of Health 2.0 health 2 or Health 3.0. That's uh, all those exciting things that are happening in the community. So I'd like to learn more about uh, sure. your mission and, and what you guys are all focusing sure. on at MGMA. Yeah, uh, happily. Uh, MGMA, again, started in 1926. Um, with the idea of that. How many companies survived that? Right, one? right. Uh, and it's a pretty special thing. But I think, you know, it's really interesting as, as an organization, we recognize what we did for that first 90 years won't take us into the next 90 years. And we had to be innovative. We had to evolve. So this was this perfect kind of synergy of what was going on in our tech community with what we had to even do with our membership. So when we look towards our membership, they're really focused on the business side of medicine. They would be the practice administrators, the health system executives, the physician leaders within the groups. And we really wanted to help support them in their optimization of how their practice ran, or individually how could we help them with professional development. And that continues to be true. But the world of associations has really changed. Um, what we can deliver in terms of value has really changed. And what we know that's what's so important for us in this whole journey it is the fact that we don't have to be the innovator to be extremely innovative. Hmm. We actually can take the position of working with our colleagues and friends that are those folks that are on the front lines of creating these You're great surrounded by innovation. Absolutely. Yeah. And my job, taking that 90-year history, I can take that out into the market space as a trusted, valuable partner. And instead of them having to explore in this world where you know, they, they come out of the gates and they create a great product, but they have no visibility. Mm -hmm. Where I want us to be as an association is somebody that can work with them, vet their products and bring it to market and have it uh, where they can quickly scale. And I think that's where we can be a great partner to the folks that are developing. And you all are using data, mm -hmm. I think, in very interesting ways. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So interestingly, again, we've been collecting the data on physician groups since 1927 um, from practice operational costs, uh, what they're spending on health IT. Um, back in the day, it was actually post-it notes. Uh, and before that, it was uh, back in the Mayo's days, it yeah, was actually punch Pony cards. Pony Express. It was punch right? cards. Absolutely. <laughs> so it was pretty neat. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've really seen that evolution and, and uh, 
you know, it's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting time for MGME of how we've been trying to cue folks into the technology that's available to them in the industry. So it's going to be great. So where do you see things going? I mean, you, you're, you, on the ground, you're mm -hmm. hearing from physicians and, and all your members mm -hmm. on, a, on a regular basis. Um, what's the feedback you're getting? Mm -hmm. What are some of the trends or insights? Um, where do you see things going? Right. Well, I think what, one of the big challenges that we've had was um, some of the stress that we've had with the implementation of technology in medical practice and, and in health systems. Uh, you look at the adoption of EHRs that's occurred over the last decade, and I would have to just, in full transparency, that didn't go all perfect. Mm -hmm. And now, now there's been tens of billions of dollars spent. Absolutely. And, and what we're left with is maybe a suboptimal solution right now. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I think the folks that built the technology have done everything that they could to build the right technology. But I think some of the elements that were missing was um, some of that clinician-physician engagement that needed to really help uh, foster that product to make sure it was a solution that met their needs. I think that's really when I talk to our members and our role that we'll play, uh, we're taking 6,000 square feet in the Catalyst Health uh, Tech Innovation Pavilion. And I want to be sure of that as they look towards business solutions that my membership um, and lead practice leaders are involved from the very front end of how those products are developed to ensure that they meet a solution on the back end. So where I think that we've seen in terms of trends is there's been an apprehension around technology. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a difficulty of implementation of technology. They're already busy. They, they sit there and go, how can I just handle one more thing? Mm -hmm. uh, so when we think about solutions that we have to bring into the community, nobody's asking for more. They're asking for better. Mm -hmm. So when I often talk to folks and- Maybe even less. That's exactly where I was headed. And, you know, the consolidation of the federation of a lot of data as well as applications, I think, is really important um, because that fragmentation is making it really difficult to implement for them. So I, I was having an interesting conversation yesterday um, about EHRs and, and really the question of do they keep incrementally getting better to fix some mm -hmm. of these problems or do you foresee... Uh, maybe a black swan moment where some new platform comes and very quickly, say over the course of three to five years, mm -hmm. completely leapfrogs the the legacy systems that, that have been around for so many years. Um, yeah. Most people say that's impossible. Billions of dollars have been sent. I'm, I'm just curious, like, do you think that's possible? Do you think that's... Well, I do think it's possible. Do I think it's probable? Maybe not right now. This, mm -hmm. you know, As I talk to the community, that's not really the space they're going, but I do see some things on the horizon that could dramatically impact some of the, um, the challenges we've seen with how EHRs been implemented. It's not about the data that's in them. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a lot of great data that's contained within them. Uh, but the ability to have portable information, and that was really some of the promises that we had around EHR implementation was that I move across the country and my physician can just share this set of data and it'll be completely a uh, seamless process. So this interoperability piece is something that clearly needs to be resolved. But I do also see technologies out there that are really fun and exciting that are at the forefront of how, uh, whether it's through AI, natural language processing, and other types of scenarios, where how we enter data and the inputs occur into that system mm -hmm. could really make the, the HR disappear right. seamlessly behind right. those technologies. And so if I looked at the 2.0 version, that's probably what I see on the two to five year horizon. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, just like any other technology, somebody will come in and disrupt the space and uh, it will deliver even better on the promise that we have through those. Yeah, it's it, it, interesting times ahead, that's sure. for sure. A um, Couple more quick questions. Lessons learned, advice for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. health transformers, innovators um, operating in this ecosystem, what do they need to know to thrive? Well, I think there's a, a several things that they should be aware of. One, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to go on it alone. I think there's a lot of ideas out there that folks, uh, you know, you think in a, tra a traditional entrepreneurial perspective where, you know, I'm going to keep this highly guarded secret 
uh, uh, before I get out in the market space. And, and what I can say, there's a lot of great folks to lean upon and, and leverage those folks. Mm. Two, make sure that you bring providers in on the front end um, and the business professionals in on the front end because they can be a great ally to you. Mm. Um, and that's not only in the design and, and creation of your product, but truthfully, it can really be your game changer the key, the golden ticket to when you have the product, how do you get it to market? Um, and they can help you communicate that. I think they can help you with how you have a voice that resonates with potential purchasers. Um, because just because I can have a cool JavaScript, uh, some type of uh, great ability of uh, developing some type of technology, no one cares. I know that's fun from a tech perspective, but what they really care about, did it solve something? Right, the solution. So that would be some of the things that I would recommend to some of the entrepreneurs that are out there. So finally, health is such a part of the culture here sure. in Colorado. It seems like throughout the state and with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What do you do to stay healthy? Um, it's always a fun question we like to ask everyone. Well, for, for me personally, uh, I, I'm fortunate enough to get uh, to play hockey probably two or three nights a week cool. uh, in men's league. I grew up in North Dakota, so a uh, huge passion for hockey. But um, I think what's really been fascinating is a lot of the employers, um, even the one that I, you know, I have the privilege of working for and with, uh, uh, we got to be a part of the American Diabetes Association Get Fit, Don't Sit Day yesterday. Oh, cool. Um, interviewed by CBS4 News at that point to, to go through that process. But we're committed to healthy eating. We're committed to uh, healthy living. Um, both a mental and physical uh, wellness component, I think, are critical. Uh, so people finding the time in our association to... Uh, do a little 5K at lunch. Um, uh, happens great. a lot. I want to do a little 5K <laughs> at lunch. Uh, yeah, or having a standing desk, yeah. you name it. So we'll yeah. try to be pretty uh, pretty innovative in that way. Well, Todd, thank you so pleasure. much for sharing your wisdom and, thank you. and helping lead the ecosystem here. Thank you much.